Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Alicia Syracuse with PAI Pharma here in Greenville, South Carolina. I've been with PAI for about five years now. I started as a production coordinator back on the packaging line and since hold a role now in the learning and development department, which was only created in the first of the year uh, of this year. So I feel like that I can um, give back the knowledge that I experienced out on the floor and with me not having any previous pharmaceutical and or manufacturing background, I can kind of um, relate to the struggles. So um, I know what struggles I had and I, I just want to make sure that no one else out there has those struggles. And if they come up, what do we do? How do we go about it? Um, and all that. So again, I'm just giving back. So welcome. Um, we thank you for taking this opportunity and um, doing the training course with us. We look forward in teaching you the knowledge and education of the pharmaceutical in industry. And it'll give you a better education and the requirements from the FDA. So we want y'all to enjoy, take notes, and let the fun begin. So CGMP, Current Good Manufacturing Practices. We will be discussing number one, the meaning of CGMP the importance, what is it when you're non-compliant? How about being compliant? The FDA enforces CGMP regulations. So what exactly is CGMP? Current good manufacturing practices, also known as your CGMPs, refers to the regulations provided by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, that guide the design, monitoring, and maintenance of manufacturing facilities and processes. The FDA enforces the regulations to ensure that manufacturing facilities of pharmaceutical products, medical devices, food and beverages, and dietary supplements are in good condition the equipment is well maintained and calibrated, and the employees are well trained and qualified to handle the manufacturing equipment and processes. The CGMP's guidelines ensure that the identity, strength, quality, and purity of drug of food and pharmaceutical products have been tested to meet the minimum requirements set by the FDA. So if you have a new associate that has not been trained, would you put it put them in your facility with them not knowing how to do the task that's being asked? No, you definitely would not want that to happen. So why is it so important? So your current good manufacturing practices provide guidance to pharmaceutical companies to help ensure that their finished products are safe for human consumption. In normal cases, a person cannot tell whether a product is safe or not through touch, smell, or sight. Also, a person may not be able to tell whether the active ingredients indicated on the label are actually what's in the drug. By conducting lab testing and random inspections of manufacturing facilities, the FDA aims to ensure that drugs produced in the market are safe for human consumptions and that the recommended manufacturing guidelines are followed. So let's say that we get Tylenol off the counter. If you open your bottle and you just look at the medication, can you tell if anything is wrong with that? 
can you look at your ingredients on the side of the bottle and then look at the capsule and say, oh yeah, these active ingredients are actually in that capsule. No, you cannot. So this is why it's so important for the lab testing, the random inspect inspections. How about non-compliance with the CGMP regulations? So if the FDA conducts an inspection on a manufacturing facility and finds the manufacturer non-compliant, any drugs or food products produced in the facility are considered alterated. This does not necessarily mean that there is something wrong with the drug, but it means that the manufacturing process of the drug did not comply with current good manufacturing practices regulations. The FDA issues form number 483 to the manufacturer requiring them to respond with a detailed explanation and the corrective action that they plan to take. If the drug in question is already in the hands of the public, then the FDA advises consumers to continue using the drug since stopping taking the drug may negatively impact their health. Instead, patients are advised to seek advice from their personal physician on whether they should change their medication or stop the medication entirely. The FDA action will rarely stop the distribution or manufacturing of a drug unless the drug is contaminated or unsafe for human consumption. The action taken depends on the drug and the nature of the violations. So as we have reviewed, it's very important that we stay compliant. We need to pull those lab samples. We need to do the random inspections. We need to monitor that we are following our good current good manufacturing practices. So what does it mean to be compliant? By being CGMP compliant, you have facilities that are in good condition, equipment that is carefully maintained and calibrated, fully trained and qualified staff, procedures and protocols that are reproducible and reliable and products that are, are of high quality, safe, and effectuous. So, in order to do all of this, you have to make sure that everyone is qualified, everyone is trained. If you have an individual, as myself five years ago, I had no clue what a procedure was. What's a protocol? There's gonna be other modules within this training that's gonna go over this. But you're gonna to have to follow procedures. You're gonna to have to follow protocols in order to be good manufacturing compliant. So the FDA enforces CGMP regulations by monitoring the facilities, equipment, employees, and processes of manufacturers. This includes ensuring that facilities are in good condition, that equipment is properly maintained and can calibrated, that employees are qualified and fully trained, and that processes are, are reliable and reproducible. By doing this, the FDA assures that manufacturing processes meet these basic requirements. We have to meet the documentation and record keeping, cleanliness and sanitation, validation requirements, raw material selection, specs and standard operating procedures, also known as SOPs. 
I would like for you to take a moment to watch this video on 10 principles of GMP. This will be a detailed and more in-depth video of your GMPs. Once you have Everyone involved in the manufacture and processing of FDA-regulated products has the responsibility to do their best to ensure that every product we manufacture is safe, pure, effective, and of the highest possible quality. In our plant, we carry out this responsibility each day by doing our jobs to the best of our abilities and by carefully following our written procedures. But we're not the only ones concerned with the health of our customers. The Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, also has this responsibility. And one of the ways the FDA works is to inspect food, drug, medical device manufacturers, and other healthcare organizations, such as blood banks, to determine the quality of manufacturing and control practices. These controls and practices are established in a government regulation called Good Manufacturing Practice. The Good Manufacturing Practice Regulation establishes minimum standards for the manufacture of our products to assist in preventing adulteration. But more importantly, good manufacturing practice needs to be a lifestyle that each company clearly defines and implements through its quality system in order to protect the health and safety of its customers. Let's focus on how the 10 principles of good manufacturing practice will help to make GMP a lifestyle in our plant. Principle number one, writing step-by-step -step operating procedures and work instructions that provide a roadmap for GMP compliance and controlled and consistent performance. Principle number two, carefully following our written procedures and instructions to prevent contamination, mix-ups, and errors. Principle number three, promptly and accurately documenting our work for compliance and traceability. Principle number four, proving that our systems do what they are designed to do by validating our work. Principle number five, integrating productivity, product quality, and employee safety into the design and construction of our facilities and equipment. Principle number six, properly maintaining our facilities and equipment. Principle number seven, clearly defining, developing, and demonstrating job competence. Principle number eight, protecting our products against contamination by making cleanliness and hygiene a daily habit. Principle number nine, building quality into our products by systematically controlling our components and product-related processes, such as manufacturing, packaging and labeling, testing, distribution, and marketing. And finally, principle number 10, conducting planned and periodic audits for compliance and performance. These 10 principles of GMP provide us with a perfect framework for building and implementing a GMP lifestyle and evaluating how well we are living up to the standards of good manufacturing practice. The first two GMP principles stress the importance of written procedures. The best way to comply with GMP is to have well-written procedures and to carefully follow them. The heart of GMP is the establishment of well-written procedures for each operation. These written procedures give us the controls necessary to minimize the chance of mix-ups and errors in manufacturing our products. When we carefully follow our written procedures, we not only ensure compliance with the GMP regulation, but more importantly, we ensure the consistent quality of our products. The next two GMP principles stress the need for us to document and validate our work. Because documentation and validation are so important to us and to our company, let's look at them more closely. We may begin by asking, 
what does documentation really mean in terms of our job performance? Well, documentation requires a specific action on our part, the recording of each significant step we perform as we complete a job task. Documentation should be made promptly and accurately and in accord with our written procedures. As important as documentation is, it shows only that we have carefully and exactly followed our written procedures. Validation is proactive proof that we can produce safe and effective products. Validation requires a series of tests to assure that our systems and processes do what we say they do. We must be sure our production processes consistently meet the specifications our company has established. Therefore, validation gives meaning to the documented records we keep. It is validation which tells us that our written procedures are correct and that our products are truly safe and effective. GMP Principles 5 and 6 focus on the design, construction, and maintenance of our facilities and equipment. Let's take a look at how GMP relates to the place where we work and the equipment we use. Our key concern is to avoid the possibility of contamination, mix-ups, and errors in our workplace. For example, we keep certain areas such as the cafeteria, locker room, and restrooms separated from the manufacturing area. Where necessary to protect the integrity of our products, we carefully control water, air, temperature, and humidity. Housekeeping, sanitation, and maintenance also function to defend against contamination, mix-ups, and errors. The seventh GMP principle states that good manufacturing practice requires competent people, people who can do the job right the first time and every time. That means it's our personal responsibility to develop, demonstrate, and continuously improve our job competence. In order to do any job well, we must be properly trained, and this is particularly true in the manufacturing and quality control areas. In fact, our company must have a formal training program to assure that each employee can competently perform assigned job responsibilities. And that leads to our eighth GMP principle, which focuses on cleanliness and requires us to be constantly on guard to defend our products against contamination. Contamination can be a powerful and dangerous enemy which takes on many different forms. One of the most common forms is particulate contamination. This simply means that a product has been made impure by any particle that doesn't belong in it. For example, dust, dirt, lint, fibers, and hair are all potential causes of particulate contamination. That's why we must be properly dressed to prevent contamination when working with our materials, components, and products. The second form of contamination is microbial contamination. This is caused by microscopic organisms known as microbes. Microbes are living organisms that exist on everything in the environment that has not been sterilized and include organisms such as fungus, mold, bacteria, and viruses. A third form of contamination is cross-contamination. Cross-contamination occurs when traces of other materials, components, and products adulterate or misbrand the products we are currently manufacturing, packaging, or testing. So it's critical that we practice good personal hygiene and help keep our workplace clean by reporting any condition or practice in our plant or with our equipment that might be a potential source of particulate, microbial, or cross-contamination. The ninth GMP principle focuses our attention on the importance of building quality into our products by systematically controlling our components and product-related processes. To see how GMP helps us build in quality, let's examine the critical areas where we must establish effective controls. Materials and components present the first critical control challenge. We must be sure all of our components and materials satisfy our quality standards. Upon receipt, they must be carefully examined for damage and contamination, properly identified and tagged, and promptly stored in a quarantined area. Where required, certain components and materials must be sampled and tested to ensure that they meet established standards of identity, quality, and purity. Only after approval are they released to manufacturing and used on a first-in, first-out basis. 
That is, the first materials and components approved for release are the first to go to manufacturing. The second critical area we must control is the manufacturing process itself. To assure quality and uniformity of each product, we have master records that outline the specifications and manufacturing procedures, individual batch or history records to help us document our conformance to the master record, and written schedules and procedures for cleaning and maintaining our equipment. To help us operate in a state of control, we carefully follow written work instructions, accurately collect critical data, and promptly document manufacturing results. Packaging and labeling is the third critical area where we control for quality. We must inspect the packaging and labeling area before each new lot or batch is processed to help us assure that the packaging equipment is clean and that the area does not contain any packaging or labeling materials from a previous run. The fourth critical area, testing, supports all other areas of control. How we handle incoming, in-process and finished product test samples, how we perform test methods, and how we document test results are all significant elements of the testing process and must be performed by qualified individuals. The final critical area of control focuses on how we assure the safety, effectiveness, and purity of our products as they enter the marketplace. The challenge to control for quality does not end when the finished product is tested and released. We must carefully control the product as we warehouse and distribute it to our customers. We must closely monitor the sales and marketing strategies we use to interact with our customers. And we must keep accurate records to provide product traceability and promptly respond to any customer problems, concerns, or complaints. The tenth and final GMP principle entails the need to continually audit our day-to-day -day job performance and verify that we are in compliance with the good manufacturing practice regulation. FDA has a major responsibility to externally audit our manufacturing operations to see if we are in compliance with the current GMP regulation. But it's our company's responsibility to internally ensure the integrity of our products, and most importantly, it's our personal responsibility to evaluate how well we are living up to the standards of GMP by performing a self-audit using the 10 principles of good manufacturing practice, you can help make GMP a daily lifestyle at our company and not just a regulation. In addition to our responsibilities to our customers, the FDA also has a responsibility to protect the consumer. In fact, the FDA can recommend a recall of a product if they find one of our products are contaminated, mislabeled, or if our products are not manufactured in compliance with the current good manufacturing practice regulation. So it's extremely important that we carefully follow the 10 principles of good manufacturing practice. At our company, we are all concerned about what we do and how we do it. This concern for quality helps us earn the trust of the millions of people who use our products. It's our job to make GMP a lifestyle and live the principles of GMP each and every day. Now it's time to take our seven question quiz. I would like for you to take this quiz, put it on the blackboard with your answers. All the questions that you see in front of you were discussed either in the tutorial that we went through and or the video.
So CGMP discussion. I need for you to provide a pro and a con for each of the following listed below if a pharmaceutical company did or did not follow the CGMPs. What would happen is basically, you know, if you follow this and or if you do not follow, what could be be become to be the outcome of the do's and the don'ts, if you will? Also, I need for you to um, do this discussion and upload it to your Blackboard. We would like to thank you for your undivided attention throughout this presentation and look forward in meeting you in the future, wishing you nothing but the best in your career. Just a little quote here, the chapter you're learning today is going to save someone's life tomorrow. Please pay attention. I hope everyone has enjoyed this module. Um, again, I'm Alicia Syracuse. I believe you have been provided with my email address. Um, I will be more than happy to help anyone with any questions. If I do not know the answer to the questions, I will find the answer. So everyone, please um, take care. Enjoy the journey and learn all that you can. Education is a masterpiece.